While available sources of finance for climate change adaptation continue to grow, developing countries continue to face unique challenges to access finance and to do so quickly. One of these challenges relates to limited in-country technical knowledge and institutional capacities to prepare project proposals that meet requirements for approval. This can result in delayed considerations for funding request approval to project or program implementation. In the case of the GCF, insufficient data, an unclear or inadequate project or activity formulation are common problems raised in the review process of funding requests. There are three main actors that have a formal role to play in developing and submitting GCF funding requests documents and overseeing and managing the implementation and completion of a project or program. First, national designated authorities, or NDAs, represent the national government. Second, accredited entities, or AEs, are the official partner of the GCF to receive funds. And third, executing entities, or EEs, include other organizations that can manage GCF funds to implement part of or all GCF-funded activities. NDAs, as defined by the GCF, are government institutions that serve as the interface between each country and the fund. They provide broad strategic oversight of the GCF's activities in the country and communicate the country's priorities. Each country's NDA will ensure that the fund's objectives and actions are aligned with key national objectives and priorities, and that they advance adaptation and mitigation objectives adequate to domestic needs. Example NDAs are Bhutan's Gross National Happiness Commission and the Fiscal Policy Agency of Indonesia's Ministry of Finance. In summary, NDA roles include providing strategic oversight of national adaptation priorities, convening national stakeholder consultations, nominating national implementation entities for GCF accreditation, and providing no objection letters during the submission of GCF funding request processes. However, NDAs may adopt different approaches to accelerate adaptation project pipelining for climate funds like the GCF, either independently or in collaboration with other organizations. As of 2021, Indonesia has received approval for six projects and has at least eight additional projects in the GCF pipeline. In general, we have five uh, main roles that is mandated to us from the ministers. The first uh, role is to provide broad strategic oversight of the GCF activities in the country. In this context, the NDA takes part as the lead uh, the leader for all of the GCF activities related in the national context in Indonesia. It is, it is important to build communication with the NDA uh, from the very beginning of your conceptual development process. Uh, for example, Yayasan Kahati already uh, consult with the NDA from the beginning of their concept not development process. Uh, most of the project proponents sometimes uh, suddenly come to the NDA with the proposal and so NDA could have all of the project, uh, project proponents to connect with uh, important stakeholders such as the ministers and also the related uh, CSO if the project proponents need it. It will take a long process uh, as uh, we learn uh, with the Yasan Kahati, we, it takes uh, almost already a year uh, to develop the concept not project idea to the concept not that is already suitable for the GCF. Accredited entities, or AEs, partner with the GCF to receive and manage approved finance and implement projects and programs on the ground. Working with relevant stakeholders to prepare and submit funding request documents for GCF review and approval, AEs often supervise, manage, monitor, and report on the implementation of funded activities. Additionally, AEs are also in a position to mobilize additional co-finance to complement GCF commitments. Of course, in developing theory of change uh, to each other stakeholders, and do not. Uh, we have been very worked very closely with NDA from the beginning of developing the concept note, and through the facilitation by NDA and GCF, we were able to develop the proposed uh, the concept note. 
AEs implement funded activities and often support AEs in project design and funding request preparations. In some cases, one organization can act as both AE and EE. Other implementing partners involved in the execution of activities can often take a substantial role in the design and development of funding requests. So we gathered the task force. No? This task force is um, basically composed of the different uh, uh, bureaus and uh, service offices of the Department of Health. Just to mention that it's our government's bureaucratic in essence. No? So basically we, we have a lot of, of uh, offices with the different functions. Like the project formulation process is a complex journey that involves a wide range of considerations and processes. Key elements of project preparation may include desk research and data gathering, field work and stakeholder engagement activities, climate risk and vulnerability assessments, feasibility studies, including technical, economic, environmental, and social aspect, a thorough review of GCF guidelines and requirements, identification of potential sources of co-finance and implementation partners. While assembling the above elements is key, the main task consists of articulating the funding request following the various documents and templates required by the GCF. Articulating the problem is a key element to ensure that project or program activities are framed adequately. Adaptation projects should detail the root cause of the problem and how climate change is contributing to this problem at present and in the future under different climate change scenarios. A recommended approach to do so is to gather a team that can represent various perspectives since the early stages of project design while contributing to compile the necessary data to build a strong evidence base. Funding request documents for the GCF ask to draw clear links to existing background policies and plans, such as nationally determined contributions, adaptation and development plans, as well as ongoing programs or initiatives with relevance or links to the proposed objectives. These documents and initiatives provide valuable insights into national priorities and may contain or refer to data that establish baselines and identify assumptions and barriers to project implementation. In the case of other projects, programs, or initiatives, a more careful consideration of co-financing opportunities or leverage resources can strengthen proposals. Stakeholder engagements and careful consideration of environmental and social aspects of the proposed activities from the early stages of project design is key to articulate avenues for the project's long-term sustainability. GCF reviews of funding requests can be expected to examine the alignment of project or program activities with its investment criteria, assess technical aspects, and consider the evidence provided. A common request for clarification during review stages includes specifying local capacities, resources, or needs to carry out activities through the last mile to reach beneficiaries. It is also recommended to examine and show alignment of project activities with ongoing initiatives and institutions to demonstrate support for the proposed activities. Defining a government's framework for a project is crucial, but often overlooked or not prioritized. The GCF can be expected to review details on coordination and implementation measures between implementing partners. Project proponents should also specify approaches to monitoring and evaluation, knowledge management, and lessons sharing. Uh, in Indonesia, we have several activities to engage with the stakeholders. Uh, the first one is annual participatory review forum. So we will invite all of the stakeholders annually. In terms of the Green Climate Fund, the main thing is um, that you have to show impact and you have to show paradigm shift. The GCF expects that claims and proposal documents are supported with sound scientific data. Hence, it is important to exploit the findings of preparatory assessments, research, and other documentation to the fullest extent and to ensure that there is a high quality of analysis. Another recommendation is to reference reviews of similar or pilot projects to note any technical, organizational, logistical, or other barriers to or factors for success and failure in the local context where resilience building measures are being proposed. These may include project completion reports by international organizations, other approved GCF projects, or similar initiatives in other countries or regions that can bridge information or local evidence gaps. Stating risks and limitations that can hinder success of the project and detailing strategies to address these threats will show diligence and strengthen a proposal. It is prudent to consider operations, safety, and financial risks, and develop contingency plans or risk mitigating measures. One way to do this is referring to lessons learned from similar projects and clearly outlining the project boundaries on timelines 
infrastructure, systems, beneficiaries, institutions, and ecosystems. In many cases, feasibility assessments to ensure technological, economic, or financial viability of the proposed project activities will be requested in later stages of the GCF funding request process. Conducting early stage assessments, even if not formally required, can help map out or draw links to some of the considerations needed for funding approval. Some examples include sensitivity analysis on project objectives against adverse conditions and economic and financial assessments, such as cost-benefit and cost-effectiveness, to systematically determine the best intervention among alternatives and economic viability of activities. Similarly, articulating the link of activities to other environmental and social considerations via environmental impact assessments or gender analysis and action plans can accelerate the process for funding approval. You may also consider seeking funding for conducting technical or feasibility studies, including via the GCF Project Preparation Facility. So there are three approval levels in the Secretariat for concept notes and funding proposals, and they are called the Climate Investment Committee 1, 2 and 3. And the Climate Rationale will be the first, the CIC1, Climate Investment Committee 1, they will look at the strength of the Climate Rationale, and if that's strong enough, they will approve it for further for further working. In order to access project preparation funds, you need to get the concept approved by CIC2. And by that stage, it not only needs to have a strong climate rationale, but it also needs to have a strong intervention strategy that is credible, credible in the sense that it is likely to generate impact and is likely to generate paradigm shift. There are common mistakes to avoid before submitting any funding request documents. First, proposed activities or project is outside of the thematic priorities or requirements of the GCF. Second, alignment with national plans and strategies is not clear. Third, the problem statement describes a development project and not a climate change related one. Fourth, proposals lack detail or elaboration or detail on sections or poor quality of analysis. Other mistakes include incoherence between elements of the logical framework, incomplete project risk mitigation measures, and incomplete compliance with environmental and social expectations. Lastly, failing to adjust information from other projects to a local setting can also lead to requests for clarification and revision. Accessing the Green Climate Fund for climate change adaptation can be complex and competitive. However, a careful approach to project formulation and early stage project preparation activities can be expected to result in high quality proposals and lead to successful securing of finance.